scoff when Zeiss calls this $4,000 lens affordable until you realize what it compares to. This premium lens can have both an artistic and modern look that might finally make you forget the film look. It's the Zeiss Otis 55mm f1.4. I own both the Zeiss Otis 28mm and 55mm. These full frame manual focus lenses have incredible build quality. Everything about these lenses feel premium including the look, design, and feel. It's as if they wanted to make a lens as sleek as an Aston Martin, but also be able to survive a nuclear fallout. They went through the same effort with the lens hood, which is reversible and covered with felt on the inside. Some differences of the 55 include a smaller further thread at 77mm compared to 95mm. The 55 is more manageable and comparatively lighter, though you may still want to renew your gym membership if you plan on using this 1kg lens all day. The smooth focus throw on the 55 is twice as long at around 240 degrees and twice the headache. This makes a full focus rack by hand cumbersome. Though operators of follow focus systems will likely prefer this for precise focus pulling. Video users may also be disappointed as the lens breathes quite noticeably, though you probably won't be doing big focus racks with this length. Another big negative of the 55 is that the minimum focusing distance is quite abysmal. You can't get very close to your subject unless you use an extension tube. That being said, when I do use my Fringer adapter for APS-C, I get better reach and can even do macro shots that you see on this channel. If you plan on using this lens for filmmaking, be warned that the Otis lenses may need modding, especially because of the different sizes, weights, filter threads, and focus rings. But if you can overcome the practical inconveniences, you may find the image quality to be well worth it. The image on the 55mm lens can be unlike anything you've seen. Personally, I think 35 to 55mm is more versatile, but then Zeiss would have made too perfect of a lens for filmmakers who would just buy this lens over the Zeiss Supremes. The closeness is very good for intimate close-ups, which makes this lens very good for narrative work. The way it renders faces is quite flattering. To try and put the Zeiss look into words, the lens is strangely sharp but with impossibly soft edges. This is desirable for video, as your image will have clarity while not having such harsh edges. The focus fall off is dramatically sliced compared to the smoother, organic, almost anamorphic roll off of the 28mm. In conjunction with the compression, the 55 has some absurd bokeh. Something peculiar happens in the corners of this lens when measuring distance that can make bokeh swirly and soft. Combined with disciplined contrast, these attributes give the image a 3D Zeiss pop, providing extreme separation with the background. This is also accomplished by the way the lens accurately renders colors, highlights, and shadows to create medium format depth. At shallow depths of field, there's a pastel look that can make your images look almost painted. All signature Zeiss qualities are amplified at this aperture, including photorealistic highlights, so bear that in mind with artificial lighting. It may not be the best for capturing micro details as there's also vignetting and softening in the corners. You'll also struggle getting both eyes in focus at f1.4, but in return, you'll get an ethereal rendering that makes everyday objects look mesmerizing. If you do want less of the Oppenheimer look, I suggest f2.8 to f4, which brings back grit and micro contrast. But you may not care when you get images like this, and I'd argue for filmmaking you don't always want to see such details like the individual pores on your subject's face anyway. Around f5.6, it forms corner-to-corner -corner perfection and will be great for filming. Minimal distortion, manageable fringing, and well-controlled flares produce an image so clean, it's like you're actually there. These characteristics ultimately define the versatile aesthetic of the Otis, which I can also describe as painted, thick, and heavy. It may be more partial to modern themes, 
having the option of an impressionistic or clean image depending on the aperture. Nevertheless, it projects a premium look that can substitute professional cinema lenses 10 times its price. Though I'm a fan of 28mm, the 55 better suits portrait shots and narrative work simply due to its focal length and magnetic compression. This can sometimes be too tight for over the shoulder conversations, and I think will shine better with close ups. Just like the film Joker, I think filming at 1.85 aspect ratio is more optimal with this focal length. Although the 28 is more versatile, I'm always excited when the situation calls for this 55mm lens. For stills, it's the most artistic lens I've used, capable of painting dreamy images. You can get some very special shots with this lens if you can navigate the right angles and apertures. For filming, I'd recommend stopping down quite a bit. Some lenses will be better for video, and some will be better for stills, but this one excels at both. Some people may want lenses with more imperfections, but I'd argue for narrative work, a clean image allows you to focus on the most important aspect of a film, the story. As an acolyte of Team Deacons, I really like the look of his recent films, which were usually sought on Ari Signature and Zeiss Master Primes. The Otis gets you pretty close to that look. I think in this price category, people will also be considering cinema lenses or anamorphics. It's true that cinema lenses are more practical because of T-stops, consistent filter threads, and breathing. But most cinema lenses today are all the same soft film look, and I believe the Otis will make her work stand out more. As for anamorphics, I think they are often misutilized. Half the time I see indie films with anamorphics, they are shot in narrow hallways with empty bedrooms. I don't see the point. You don't always need to shoot anamorphic as spherical is more intimate, and you have the flexibility of shooting other aspect ratios. Decent anamorphics undoubtedly have an epic look for cinema and music videos but it should complement the story, not define it. Unless you're shooting scale or utilizing the aberrations, I find spherical lenses to perform and fit better. And the Otis is one of the best spherical lenses you can get. You may not consider it a bargain, but no other full frame lens will get you close to medium format, and it might just make you stop chasing the film look.